Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. So in the last Mark 39 update video, I kind of got you guys caught up on how I did the paint and I was able to rush through Starboost super quick. Now in today's video, I want to talk about the quick and dirty electronics I threw into this thing so it looked good for some pictures. Let's take a look. So Starboost was a rush job, which is really stupid to say because I've been working on the thing for like two years, but it all came to a head uh, a month or two ago and I wanted to get it ready for New York Comic Con. I just did not have time to do all of the electronics that I planned on doing. Now I'm still going to eventually do those, there's no reason I can't go back and stuff them in there and fix it. There's a lot of things I have to fix on Starboost. Speaking of fixing things, the next update video is going to be about all the things I learned after wearing it. I did a very similar video on my Mark 85, um, you know, mistakes I made and things I want to upgrade. So the video after this is going to be about that, but today it's about the electronics and honestly, I'm really happy with how they came out, especially since I was only able to do them in like a night. So what electronics do people look for in something like an Iron Man costume? This kind of applies to like any costume or cosplay you're doing. Like what are the most recognizable things people are looking for in a Halo or Iron Man costume or whatever you're dressing up as? I think one of the main things is obviously the faceplate opening and closing, and that was always something I was gonna do, but it's really not a requirement, I think, though it makes your life a lot easier when you're walking around the con. So I'm glad I was able to get that done. No, the other two things I think are your chest arc reactor lighting up. It's, it's Iron Man, he has an arc reactor. Throw any type of light back there, and I'm gonna show you guys a couple different lights you can use for that. And the other thing is the palm, a repulsor. Some type of light in your palm that you can aim at people's cameras just looks so much better when you're standing there for the photos. I think this is the thing people look for the most. Yeah, if your mask opens and closes, that's great, but people want that. People can't take a photo of that. People can take a photo of this. So let's hop over to the desk and let's talk about the gloves first and how I put this whole system in there. So when I said this was a very quick solution, I'm not kidding. The entire system is self-contained inside the forearm and uh, uh, hand, and I was able to make it a little bit nicer than I had planned. So right in here is a battery pack and it's just sitting inside the forearm with some Velcro. Now, I could have used probably a little USB battery pack, but I actually ended up just using the battery system that comes with the light and I added a wire to it. I cut it down and trimmed it as much as possible, but where did I get this system? Everything you see right here, except obviously the connectors, is just from a really small, cheap light from the dollar store. I was actually able to get a pack of these on Amazon for like five bucks. And they're those little closet clicker lights. And like, look at the inside of that. Doesn't that just already look like an arc or a, a repulsor, not an arc reactor, you know what I mean. It just comes apart and has a little battery pack in the back. So let's take this apart. All right, so after you unscrew the back of this, it's gonna give you a few things. It's gonna give you a nice little clear lens, the little light right there, and actually the button system sitting right there. I can click that and then it's wired to the battery pack. Now, even though I unscrewed everything, you can actually go and throw batteries back into this. So the batteries are back in, I have the switch exposed and I can just turn this on and off whenever I want. Now, this would be a little bit tricky to fit into a palm, like a, a you know, repulsor. You could have this here and have that down in your wrist, um, but I would definitely recommend extending these wires exactly like I did. This is not hard to work with and it's literally just a perfect circuit with a really simple button to press. The circuitry for the system is all right there and you could extend either set of these wires. You could put this button wherever you need it to. It's just a, it's just an on off switch. What I ended up doing was cutting apart uh, as much of the plastic as possible. So I just didn't need to have this, you know, bulky thing hiding in the forearm. But if you didn't feel like cutting it apart, you could just kind of twist it back together. And there you go. You have a battery self-contained battery pack with a little sticky thing on the back. You can do whatever you want with it and then put the light, you know, anywhere you want. I love this solution for so many ways because it's just something simple you can buy. You can throw it in a glove and you instantly have a light source. Now, if you wanted to, you could go and ditch this entire battery pack. Um, always pay attention to the amount of power going to the light. This is a 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. So this is about a 4.5 to 5 volt battery system. So you don't want to throw nine volts at it. You'll burn out the LED. So you could cut these wires and wire it up to a USB system, like a USB battery pack, and that could be slimmer, smaller. You could wire, run the wire up into the suit somewhere, but I like that I have this nice little self-contained system here. Honestly, I could probably just stuff this up in the back of the palm, 
and do a little bit of wire tucking, but like right there, look, I have an Iron Man glove and I can kind of push my palm into the button and hold it. I can't turn it on and off like this. I think I would need to move the button somewhere else. Right now it's literally sitting behind the light, but I can hold it off by putting some tension in there and then I relax my palm. So that's a cool little gimmick you can do. The fingers are all falling apart. We're gonna talk about it in the next video, but like it's simple. It's super simple. It's not as complicated as the repulsor system in my Mark 85. Um, so this saved the day and was it let me take those really cool pictures. So with that solved, let's talk about the arc reactor, which was a little bit trickier, but really you could do the same thing. Okay, so I might have been a little bit extra with the arc reactor in Starboost. And um, well, that's what I mean by extra. There's a lot more going on in this chest plate, all for a simple light than there needs to be. But I, I don't know, I was in a rush and I really wasn't thinking. For those of you that kind of know what you're looking at or maybe even don't know, this is a USB battery pack running to a Crashworks Alicia board. Now, if you're familiar with me talking about the Crashworks Alicia board, this is meant to power either an Iron Man helmet motorization, which we'll talk about in a few minutes with the motorized helmet, and it can even power an entire suit. I have this simple board right here. It powers my entire Mark 85. The helmet, the lights, the chest, the repulsors, all off of one board. And in this case, I'm using it to turn on one LED in the chest. It's overkill, but it works. This is an Adafruit NeoPixel ring, and it lets me change the color of the ring. I can make this red, blue, green, yellow, fuchsia, magenta, whatever, and I didn't want it pure white. This is pure white, and we're gonna talk about this thing in a second, but you can see this is a cooler blue tinted white, and uh, or a, a, a tinted blue cool white. I wanted that color because that looks more Iron Man-y to me than just a you know screaming bright white light. So by using the Craftsworks board, I was able to adjust the color of it but again, that was overkill, especially for the time crunch I was in. Let me take this whole thing out. Luckily, I had some foresight in the uh, whole project and I actually made this entire thing removable using elastic bands and a plug that has way too much slack in it. I'm actually able to take the entire arc reactor out. This is a separate 3D printed reactor. You guys have seen this earlier in the videos, uh, but I was able to slap it all together and sitting inside there is that NeoPixel ring. I just have a plug wire to it. And again, I put a lot of slack on it because um, I wanted to be able to go back and adjust anything I need to, but I thought it was cool that I could take the reactor out and it added such a level of depth to the build. I mean, you saw it when it lit up. Um, I'm very proud of this thing and how many layers of detail it has in it. Isn't that cool? I still think it's cool. It has a cool light up sequence and I can play with that later, but this is the whole system. Battery pack, Alicia board, arc reactor. Like, look, oh God, look at it. Look at how cool that came out. You can't tell me that wasn't worth it. And while this came out cool and is kind of complicated for what I was trying to accomplish, I could have just used this thing. This is another one of those little clicker push lights and it's even shaped like an arc reactor. I got this in California when me, Danny and Emily and Kiara, I think we stopped at like a five below or a Walmart. It, it was just sitting there. It was just, it, it's cheap. This cheap little, little push button thing in the center. And you can take this apart and look, batteries. But we can go one further. If you pop it apart even more, you can take the whole button and the lens out. You can take the screen and switch out. And just like I was showing you guys before, it's just a simple circuit. Look, look at how flat this LED is. If you just extend those wires, put the you can get rid of the button and add your own switch. And look at that. It's a perfectly flat ring you could stuff into an arc reactor. You can't tell me that wouldn't have done the exact same job as this complicated mess I made. Put a little bit of a frosted lens over it and like that's an arc reactor. Nobody would look at that at a con and be like, "Oh, Iron Man doesn't have a circular ring in his chest." He does, and I do. So less can absolutely be more, but I had plans for this and I, I had a specific goal for that and that's fine. But again, as a really quick solution, this would have been perfect and would have been a lot less complicated than what I did. So I, I kind of want to get more of these. Like just look how, this is nice. This is, this is bright too. I have lights on me and you can still see this thing. So yeah, those are options for the chest and arc reactors. Um, and if you wanted to, you could use the lens, you could sand it a little bit to get a little bit, of, uh, you get it frosty or hazy. Um, this is another light I have for like my cameras and you can see it's like frosted on top of it. Um, saran wrap, there's tons of things you could do to diffuse this. Those are the two main lights I put in the suit. We wanted, I wanted the chest reactor, like look, this would be good for like a fake Tony Stark cosplay, Tony Stank, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, that would be great for that. Uh, and then you have little hand lights. 
So the last thing I want to talk about what I did is the helmet. Okay, last but not least, this awesome helmet by Walsh 3D. First up, let's talk about the little chin trigger system I have hidden in here. Well, it's kind of annoying. Sitting right in there is a little trigger, a little limit switch that I've used plenty of times in other videos, sitting in the perfect position for me to just, you know, while I'm talking, to uh, accidentally hit so it closes while I'm talking to somebody. And it's, it's, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, there is a little bit of limited room in this helmet because I stuffed all of the electronics in there. I was able to actually fit the Crashworks board in there. Now, for those of you that don't know what these Crashworks boards are, um, it's a fancy way or a particular way of saying an all-inclusive Iron Man system control helmet, blah, blah, blah. The makers of these boards saw a hole in the hobby and they were like, hey, what if we made a really neat little um, control board that you can plug a little Arduino into and it has all of the connections you need to you know, control a helmet or a suit. It's literally labeled. You have your right LEDI, left LEDI, your first server, your servo, your second servo, um, your input switch, your power. It's just a jumper board. You can do everything I'm doing with just the Arduino, but it makes it a lot easier to just plug the system in plug all the wires into the right locations and then it just works. You run the servo wires to the servos, you run the LEDIs to the LEDIs, you throw power at it and the board kind of does everything from there. It just makes it easier. And they have bigger versions of these boards that have more outputs, auxiliary outputs. This is actually the board that's powering my Mark 85. So it has auxiliary outputs for like your repulsors, all of the body lights. But at the very core basis of what these boards tried to do is help you motorize an Iron Man helmet. That's it. Now the electronics of the Iron Man helmets are, I don't wanna say the easier part, but I don't wanna say the harder part, but now they're really easy. What I think was the hardest part was actually getting all of the mounts and motorization things into the helmet. If you guys have ever motorized your own helmet, um, in the past, you know how frustrating it can be. And if you guys wanna follow a whole tutorial on how to do that, check out this video, that one, this one, I think it's over here maybe, um, on installing and motorizing an Iron Man helmet, but it's even easier now. One of the hardest parts is getting these arms to line up and that was always a pain in the butt, but now really awesome 3D modelers, um, VEC 3D, Walsh 3D, Levy 3D, they're actually modeling all of the mounting points into the helmet. So. All these hinges, they are they 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 can only go in one spot. It, everything prints in place. Like it doesn't print like this, but you just screw all the parts together and it's already motorized. There's no guessing. This is the Mark 39 helmet by Walsh 3D. And the second he talked about making one and releasing one, we had a long conversation about it, um, giving him ideas back and forth. This is like the best Iron Man helmet to practice on. I I don't think there is a better one and it's free, it, like everything I've talked about, it's link, it'll be linked down below, you guys know that. Um, but it, it's like Legos, you print all the pieces in the same scale, you screw them all together, you get something like a Crashworks board, plug everything in with the electronics, the servos, and the helmet just works, it's, it's amazing. Stuff like this is what the hobby needs, the, 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 especially the Iron Man niche, this is driving modelers to be better. One modeler's doing it, so now all the other modelers wanna do it, and websites like DO3D try to catch up, not quite. Um, so this is amazing. It's never been easier to motorize these helmets. I love this thing. So while the DO3D Mark 39 helmet looks okay, this is just a no-brainer. It's free. There was a reason I wanted to stuff all the electronics into this except the battery pack. And I'll show you what I had to do for the battery pack um, a little bit later. I wanted to be able to take the helmet off and it not affect the suit. So I have the Crashworks board sitting up there with some Velcro. I added some just foam and padding and I will eventually go and get rid of the board and just put the Arduino in there. It'll let it'll it'll give me a little bit more room in the helmet. Right now it's a little tight um, and it'll stop me from hitting that chain trigger. But the special thing I did is that chin switch, and I'm sure some of you guys have already noticed, this is aluminum foil tape, or uh, um, uh, foil tape I think it's called. And what this is, this is a positive wire connection, this is a negative wire connection. So you can see, hiding under this duct tape, there's some wires running to each side, and then I have the same thing, here's a positive connection, here's a negative connection. As long as the wires are touching this metal foil, I'm able to run the wire all the way to that chin trigger. So now I have a whole electronic uh, trigger system that I can take on and off. 
So when I put it on the helmet, the connection, the circuit is completed, right? Positive, negative, but then I can still completely remove the jaw because there'd be no way to get my head in this thing otherwise. You guys know that. So all I have to do is connect this, positive, negative, and it works every time. It's great. And I can open it, take the jaw back off if I want to, and put it on, take it off, whatever. Uh, it, it works. I'm very proud of this. I tried to just use magnets initially um, because these are all magnetized. There's magnets holding the jaw on, but it wasn't solid. It wasn't as solid of a connection. If the jaw moved a little bit, I had to push on it to get the chin to work. But adding this foil solved all those problems, and there's no reason to like go back and engineer it anymore. If it if it works, if it's dumb but it works, it ain't dumb. Also, for those wondering who have made or are going to make the Walsh Mark 39 helmet. I didn't glue any like any of the parts in. It's all double stick tape. I can take off this top dome part, this back hexagon piece, these hexagon pieces, the lip, the little jaw piece. Everything's held on with double stick tape in case I want to go and um, change anything, repaint anything. Because I, I, it even took some damage like with me doing this video. I dropped it. Oh well. The other problem I was having with the helmet was the battery pack location. Even my smallest battery packs, while they don't last too long, I still couldn't get it to fit in the helmet. So I actually hid it in the backpack of the suit. It's gonna be a little tricky to see, but all of this Velcro sitting inside of the backpack is where I would mount the battery pack for the, um, for the helmet. And then I would run it up my neck in, like inside the little neck piece here, I'd have the wire coming up my neck and just sticking out the back of my head. Like this way, when I put the helmet on, I could plug it in, unplug it. I didn't have to take the battery pack out of the suit. I wouldn't have to disconnect anything except the little plug on the back of the helmet. And I could have somebody take my helmet off me completely while I was in the suit. This way I could breathe a little bit. Here's the little plug I'm talking about. It just kind of slips right up in there. Boom, done, and then at my neck gaiter, the little bo uh, balaclava that I wear around my head, it covers it and hides it and you can't see it at all. Um, one thing I do wanna to touch on though, is make sure the plugs and connecting systems are easy for people to understand. You're not the one who's mostly gonna be suiting yourself up. Sure, you might get lucky and you might be able to put your suit on completely by yourself. I can get both these suits on most of the way, but if you have somebody helping you, good, that's awesome but make your suit idiot proof. That is something I went through a lot of trial and error with. Um, if you have two plugs sitting next to each other and then they have to connect to two plugs like this, don't make them the same plug or at least flip them so it's male, female, male, female. Don't put a male, male, female, female and then, well, you know it's the one with a little bit more tape on it but just make it as idiot proof as possible. Make it so it doesn't matter if they have any idea what your system is, they can look at plug A and plug B, put them together, no questions asked. Um, so definitely try to streamline your system like that. This way you're not fumbling and you're the, the less time you can spend fumbling to get into your suit, the more time you can spend actually in it and enjoying yourself. Okay, so that's all of Starboost's current electronic systems fully explained. We have the motorized helmet and stay tuned because I'm going to make a full dedicated build video on this helmet. It's going to be a new motorization video on the Mark 39 and just the advancements we made. So uh, make sure you're subscribed for that. We have a lot more to talk about though. So just hang on. I do have plans for Starboost. Like I've talked about in previous update videos, I do want to add lights to the jetpack. There's four huge boosters on the back and it would be a disservice not to add some type of smoke or air compressor system, you know, and some lights to it. So I definitely have those coming out. I'm going to be working with a, a really cool guy named Ben Eady in order to develop a very simple system to do this that isn't dangerous or doesn't have any risks or anything and as cheap and DIY as possible. So that's going to be the key to this. The other thing I'm planning on is having a dedicated Crashworks um, board powering the suit. Like right now, yeah, the repulsors on the palms work really cool and well, and maybe we could incorporate some type of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi system into them. That's actually not that hard to do with these, but not having as many connections to put the suit on was really, really cool at the con. Um, when I'm wearing my Mark 85, I have wires to the hands, I have wires to the chest and the back and the abs and the helmet. So there's a lot of things to plug in. But not having to plug anything into the palms and arms, I could just put the arms on, that was pretty nice. Having the helmet be completely separate aside from the battery pack and just a simple plug in the neck, that was pretty nice. So I wouldn't mind having Starboost a little more streamlined. Even if like the repulsors don't get the fancy colors that my Mark 85 has, it might be a good, you know, uh, um, 
you know, pro con situation for ease of comfort and wearing. I always wanted the Mark 39 to be more comfortable, easier to wear, and trust me, it is. So I don't really want to over engineer it and make it more uncomfortable, if any of that makes sense. Another really cool thing I was just made privy to is stretchable wires. This is, a, these are wires. These are connected, you know, electrical wires you can use for cosplay. These are three pins. Look at this. Look at that. How awesome would that be if you had a stretchy wire in your wrist or palm? So no matter what you did, repulsor, flexing, it never get got bound or worn out. Um, they also sent me, he also sent me, um, this is a five pin one, six pin, five pin, six. This one's stretchy too. Imagine that going up your neck. This way you can move and bend and flex. Like this has so many practical applications in cosplay. I love it. Um, but that's all I'm going to talk about with this. If you want to learn more about these flexible wires, go check out Ben Eady's video. Um, I kind of, he, he gave these to me to test out. I haven't put them into anything yet, uh, but like, I, I already know what I'm going to do with these and uh, they're definitely going into star boost. He sent me a bunch of them. Look, look at them. Look, they're all stretchy. Wee, wee. I love these. These are so cool. Yeah. Go check out his video um, and more to come on these eventually soon. Ben, I love you. Thank you. Okay guys. I know that was like an absolute cluster of a video. I just, I wanted to get this information out there for you and I hope you guys learned something through this. Um, if you have any more comments about anything you saw, leave them down below. I can address them in the next update video, which is going to mostly be about mobility and issues um, that I ran into wearing it the first time. Uh, when I when I tell you it was a trial by fire getting into this thing for the first time in Richmond, I'm not kidding. So more to come on that. Um, if you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. This way you can stay up to date on all the videos I have coming out. Uh, I have a lot more videos coming out and I'm excited to share them with you. And if you have any comments about something that's not related to the video, you can leave those down below. Like I said, I read all of them. But that's going to be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day.